Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about linear combinations. So let's do a quick review before we explain what are linear combinations. So here it says, draw the vector b, 5, 4 on the xy plane. So let's do that. Here we have our origin. And then 5, 4 would be 5 to the right and 4 up like that. So there we go. Okay, so now what they're wondering is, well, 5, 4 is how many to the right, right? How many of these x values? Well, it's going to be 5, right? And how many of these, 0, 1? Well, 4 of them, right? So this is another way, basically, to write down 5, 4 is saying, well, it's 5 units to the right plus 4 units up is the same thing, right? Now they're asking us, can we write negative four, three, and eight as a linear combination of the standard vector units? And yes, we can. We can argue that negative four, three, eight is equal to negative four, one, zero, zero, uh, plus three, zero, one, zero, plus eight, zero, zero, one, right? So we can express any vector in this manner. And we'll talk about later, well, why would we want to do that? And how might it be a useful thing to do perhaps, right? How could this, how can writing it this way as a linear combination make it a little bit more uh, simple? Okay, so let's uh, move on. Here it says, given non-collinear vectors, which non-collinear, well, collinear is similar to, uh, to parallel, right? Uh, non-collinear vectors, so non-parallel vectors, u and v, draw w is equal to 2u plus 3v. Well, how can we do that? We can say, well, u, 1, 2, here's u and here's u again. So there's 2u over all, right? So this is over all going to be 2u. And then v is this one. So 3v, 1, 2, 3v's, 3 v. And so the resulting vector, the resultant is w, right? Is vector w. So vector w is said to be a linear combination of vector u and vector v, right? It's three vector w is equal to two vector u's, right? Plus three vector v's. All right, here's another example. Uh, vector w, write vector w 4 comma 3 as a linear combination of negative 1 comma 2, 5. Now this one is a little bit trickier because when we have 1, 0, and 0, 1, it's very simple. We could just say, oh, well, there's 4, 4, 0, 1, or sorry, 4, 1, zeros and 3, 0, 1s. It's pretty simple. But in this case, a little bit trickier because we want to write 4 comma 3 as a combination, right? A, so some amount of negative 1, 4s, plus B, 2 comma 5, right? So it's not trivial. It's not obvious to me anyway what numbers I should put as A and B in order to get the answer here, in order to get 4 comma 3 as my answer. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to break this down into two uh, linear equations. And we're going to have to use things like substitution and elimination in order to solve. Now, if you're unfamiliar with substitution and elimination, it was one of the topics in the grade 10 class. And there is a grade 10 lesson on it that you're free to, uh, to go watch if that's something that is, uh, is unfamiliar or that you just want a refresher on. Um, I'll, I'll do a little bit of going into it here, but I won't go into full detail here because it is something we've already completed. So how do we get our equation one and our equation two? Well, equation one, it says four is equal to negative a plus two b, right? Here we have four, here we have a times negative one, and then here we have b times two, right? So I'm just taking those x values here and um, putting it into equation form. And I'm gonna do the same here with B. I'm gonna say that three is equal to A times four 
plus b times 5, like that. So now what do I need to do in order to eliminate a variable? Because that's our whole goal here, is just eliminate some variable or do some substitution or, or something in order to find the answer. So I do also want to point out there's multiple correct ways of doing this here. Okay, we could, for example, multiply the first equation by uh, 4 and then add up the equations to eliminate A. We could also just rearrange equation 1 and then sub it into the second equation to find the answers. Um, we could multiply the first one by 5 and the second one by 2 if we would like for uh, to eliminate B rather than A first. Um, that one seems like it would take a bit longer than it needs to, so I'm not going to do that one. Um, but there's multiple correct ways of doing this. They're not just one way to solve a system of linear equations. There's many ways of doing it, which is why it's one of our as teacher's least favorite things to mark, because uh, there's so many different ways of doing it, and pretty much everyone's going to do it a different way once you get into hard enough examples of things like this. But anyway, how am I going to do it here? Well, I think I'm going to use substitution. I'm actually going to make a new equation based off equation 1 that says that a is equal to negative 4 plus 2b. And then now I'm going to sub a, or I'm going to sub 3 into 2. And I'm going to solve. So I'm going to say 3 equals 4a, right? a being negative 4 plus 2b plus 5b. So if we go there, 3 equals negative 16 plus 8b plus 5b. Uh, so therefore, we have uh, 13b over here is equal to negative 19, or sorry, positive 19, not negative 19. And so therefore, b is equal to 19 over 13. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to sub our answer. I'm going to sub, oops, I'm going to sub 19 over 13 into equation 3, okay? So therefore, a would be negative 4 plus 2 times 19 over 13. And let's solve for a. So 19 times 2 equals 38, divide by 13, and then minus 4. That gives us about negative 1.08. So therefore, we can conclude that 4 comma 3 is equal to negative 1.08, negative 1, 4, plus uh, 1.46, 2 comma 5. So I just used this, you know, I used this equation again, but now we have a and b. Now we've found it and we've solved for what linear combination uh, those two those two could be for, for vector w, okay? So if we did negative 1, 4, negative 1.08 times, and then 2, 5, 1.46 times, then we would have the same as 4, 3. So there we go. Yeah, so that's why, that's why I wanted to introduce just the unit ones first, because the unit ones first made it very obvious, right? It made it very clear, very obvious how these work. And then now we're doing, um, we're, we've moved on to some harder ones where it's not so trivial, where we actually have to do some solving in order to figure it out. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on to some other examples here. This next one says that um, coplanar, means two or more points or vectors are lying in the same plane. So if three vectors are coplanar, then one vector can be written as a linear combination of the others, right? Because let's think about that. Coplanar means two or more points are lying in the same plane. And remember, a plane is like a two-dimensional space, right? So it could be the xy plane, the xz plane, the yz plane, or it can be a plane that's at y equals 5 or y equals 10 or, you know, uh, any of them, any specific variable being uh, fixed at a specific point, right? A, it's basically a plane is just any flat surface, right? So if two or more points are lying in the same plane, then that means they're coplanar, right? Which means one vector can be written as a linear combination of the others in those situations. And so based on that information, they're asking us, does vector C lie in the plane determined by U and V? 
So how can we solve that? Well, what we need to do is we need to say, well, if we have uh, vector c, which is uh, negative 9, negative 4, 1, is this equal to some version of negative 1, negative 2, and 1, plus some version of uh, 3, negative 1, 1, right? So the answer, the question is basically, are there values of a and b that we'd be able to use here, right? Are, you know, are these going to lie in this plane? So let's see. Let's first make our equations and then decide that. So number one is negative nine is going to equal negative a plus three b. The second equation would be negative four equals negative two a minus b. And then number three would be one equals a plus b. Okay, so we would like to know if they lie in that plane. So let's figure that out. So first things first, I would like to solve for a and b. That's my first order of business here is to do that. So I'm actually going to say, well, equation three looks very simple to me. All right, this is this is very simple. I can just say that this means that b is equal to 1 minus a, and I can sub b equals to 1 minus a into, let's do equation 2. It doesn't actually matter which, I don't really care, uh, but let's do it. Okay, so negative 4 equals negative 2a minus b, which b is, uh, is 1 minus a, so that means what? That means negative 4 is equal to negative 2a minus 1 plus a. That means negative 3 is equal to negative a. And that means a is equal to 3. And so there's our answer for the first one. Now, in the, in the case before, I was saying it doesn't matter what we sub it back into. In this case, I actually do care. It does matter which one we sub it back into because I specifically want to sub it back into 1 because we figured out that based on 2 and 3, that a is going to be 3, right? However, we haven't done anything to do with equation 1. Right, I need to make I need to put it into equation one. So I'm specifically going to um, sub it into equation one. So let's sub a equals three into equation one, and then after that, I'm going to have to check to make sure that it works for equation two and equation three. Also, I want to make sure that it does work for all three. Okay, I want to make sure that my numbers that I'm getting don't just work for a couple of them sometimes or something like that. So let's do that. Here we have uh, negative 9 equals negative a, which is negative 3, plus 3b. So that means negative 6 is equal to 3b, which means b is equal to negative 2. Okay, so now what I would do next is I'm going to check 1, 2, and 3. So we already know that it works for 1, right? That uh, you know, a being 3 and b being 2, negative 2 works for the first equation. Now, does it work for the second equation? Yes. Yes, it does. We plug in a and b, at, you know, 3 and negative 2, it does work again. And then is it true that, you know, a plus b is 1? Yes, 3 plus negative 2 is 1, and so it does make sense. And so therefore, a, b, and c Or I shouldn't write it this way. We should say that C, vector C, can be written as a linear combination of the others. So therefore, uh, C, U, and V, not, I was saying A, B, and C, but no, A and B are just the variables we used in order to figure out, right, in order to figure out, you know, what, what our linear combination was, right? So those are not the actual vectors. The actual vectors are U and V, so it's C, U, and V are coplanar.
because they can be written as a linear combination of the others. There are some cases where this is not always possible, right? In this case, it was possible, but that does not mean that it's always going to work out this way. So therefore, we have proven that these three vectors are coplanar, right? Because vector C can be written as a linear combination of vectors uh, U and vector V. So there we have it. All right, everyone, that's it for today. And I will see you guys next time to talk about spanning sets, which is going to be our last topic of the unit. Bye, everyone.